Please be seated. I'll start with a reprise of um, America the Beautiful, um, if, um, if Renee Fleming can do it. <laughs> Wasn't it beautiful? Um, so, uh, graduates, faculty, families, guests, staff and friends, Cambridge citizens, welcome to the Campus Green. It's wonderful to have you all here with us for the Harvard Divinity School Diploma Ceremony. I'd like to take a moment to say a special thank you to parents, families and friends on behalf of the students for your crucial support throughout the graduate studies here. Thank you so much. So we celebrate with you today as well, and I would ask our graduates to rise, please, and express their thanks to you, parents, friends, and... and As one of the students said yesterday at the uh, Harambee Rites of Passage ceremony, this is a pretty good moment to tap your parents for money. <laughs> <laughs> it's been done to me before. Um, so now it's a special uh, uh, pleasure for me to introduce our student speaker today. Uh, so our speaker is Melissa Bartholomew. While practicing... <laughs> While practicing public interest law in Seattle, Washington, she embraced her call to ministry. That call took her to Rwanda in 2010, where she took a course on forgiveness and reconciliation. This experience ignited a passion within her to continue the work in the United States and brought her to Harvard Divinity School. Melissa is a compassionate and engaging leader, and this year, impacted by the events of Ferguson and Staten Island, Melissa co-founded the HDS Racial Justice and Healing Initiative. It's been a really tremendous pleasure and privilege to work with her and her co-leader uh, in this initiative. So Melissa, thank you so much. I invite you to come and address everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dean Hempton. It has been a pleasure and honor working alongside you this year. Thank you and good afternoon to all the deans and the staff and faculty, all the family and friends who've gathered, and in particular to my beloved classmates. Good afternoon and thank you for extending this honor to me, this privilege. I am deeply grateful. Like many of you, throughout my time here, I've had to answer some variation of the following question. What do you all do at Harvard Divinity School? <laughs> Is it a seminary? Are you all preparing to become ministers? What are you gonna do with a degree from a divinity school? Now, these are fair questions, and they're probably questions that many of our family and friends have at this moment. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that students from the law school, students from the business school, students from the Kennedy School don't have to answer this question. Because of the names of their schools, people are clear about what they will do. Students from the law school are studying law and will become lawyers. But what about us at the Divinity School? and in particular, Harvard Divinity School. What have we been studying? What have we been preparing to do? Why is it so difficult for people to grasp a sense of what we are about? I'm sure 
many of you have answered questions, given responses similar to mine. HGS is not a seminary. It is a place where you can engage in the academic study of religion and also prepare for non-academic ministry service, such as in faith communities or nonprofit organizations. And these responses tend to put people at ease. But is it enough? I don't think so. I don't think it adequately describes the full extent of what we do here and what makes this learning community so unique. Well, here is how I would describe who we are and what we do. We are a non-sectarian divinity school that welcomes people from all faith traditions, as well as people who do not claim a particular faith tradition or a belief in God. Now the word divinity refers to the divine, which is traditionally a religious term referencing God. So what does this mean for those in our community who do not believe in God? How are we able to create a space for people with diverse ways of knowing and being in the world that allows them to engage in rigorous academic study of religion while wrestling with sacred texts from various traditions and participating in field education experiences? How are we able to do that? Well, I contend that we do this by expanding our notion of divinity. My friends, here is what I believe our divinity looks like. There's a scene in Alice Walker's novel, The Color Purple, which I believe helps to illustrate this point. It's a scene where Suge Avery is having a conversation with Miss Seeley about God. Suge is explaining to Miss Seeley how she arrived to a new concept of the divine. She said her first step was trees, then air, then birds, then other people. She explained, but one day when I was sitting quiet and feeling like a motherless child, which I was, it come to me that feeling of being a part of everything, not separate at all. I knew that if I cut a tree, my arm would bleed. Suge Avery's theology helps to describe our way of being here at the Divinity School. Our divinity is revealed through our connectedness to each other. When you come to Harvard Divinity School, you come with the intention of stepping outside of your comfort zone and connecting with people from diverse religious traditions and with those who do not claim a particular faith. While remaining rooted in your own particularity, we are open to exploring the religions and ideologies of others. When you come, you commit to a way of being that creates an openness for these connections in order to feel like you are a part of everything. We're not perfect but our way of being is intentional about establishing connections with each other across religious divides. And it is in our imperfections that we find our common humanity. Our divinity is alive through our common humanity. When I first arrived at HDS, I was greeted with radical hospitality and a generosity of spirit. I was welcomed to be who I am, who I was created to be, and to believe what I wanted to believe. There is a, friend, a sense of freedom that emerges from this, a belief that anything is possible. Because I have connected to people who see me and have been willing to interact with me on a deeper level. Together, we are able to get engaged in a generous and open way that creates a holy space. It's a space where I, as a Christian, can prepare for Christian ministry and study Buddhist ethics alongside a Buddhist nun and Buddhist monks, or take a Christian-centered preaching class alongside a humanist. My friends along this journey have been Christian, Unitarian Universalist, Muslim, Buddhist, Jewish, atheist, Hindu, and humanist. We have participated in the work of discovery together inside and outside of the classroom. We have developed the ability to be at the table of difference together, listening to each other's perspectives and inviting others in to consider our own with humility and grace. Our training here helps to cultivate open hearts and open minds. We are learning to transform our way of being in the world. 
As a Christian minister, I have learned how to lead healing spaces by opening with silence and words of affirmation that create space for everyone. And I've transformed, I've been transformed in these spaces, which have redefined wholly for me. I came to HGS because I wanted to develop a multi-faith paradigm for racial reconciliation and healing through forgiveness. And I wanted it to be something that would transcend all religious backgrounds, to engage people of all faiths and people who do not claim a particular faith. My training here has equipped me for this work. Our openness and our willingness to meet people where they are and to engage across theological and ideological differences with grace and humility is the work of love. This is what our divinity looks like. And this is the disposition we must take into the world to address society's complex moral problems, including religious intolerance, racism, gender inequality, LGBTQ inequality, and our climate crisis. This involves the work of justice, and integral to justice is the work of love. Christian theologian Paul Tillich said, the creative element in justice is love. And I contend that love heals the wounds that creates a sense of separateness that shields us from the truth of our interconnectedness. And at the root of all of society's social dilemmas is our disconnectedness from each other and from all creation. This disconnectedness leads to the ongoing killing of unarmed black and brown people by police in this country. It causes us to treat thousands of brown children who cross the US-Mexico border into our country, escaping violence and seeking refuge like criminals instead of refugees. This disconnectedness fuels the increase in anti-Muslim and anti-Jewish hate crimes in this country and across the world. This disconnectedness keeps us from bleeding when the trees are cut down and we no longer feel what Shug Avery described to Miss Seeley, that we are all connected. Our way of being here, where we engage in theological discovery and other pursuits together, while trying to keep our hearts and minds open helps to ensure that any work we pursue, whether it is in traditional ministry, the academy, social justice, interfaith work, or climate activism, will be grounded in a sense of justice that is translated into a commitment to remaining in right relationship with each other and with all creation. This is what our divinity looks like. It fuels the work of love that breaks down the walls between us. It reflects the South African ethic of Mbutu, the idea that my humanity is completely tied to your humanity. We cannot flourish in our humanity unless we acknowledge the full humanity of others. This way of being that we embody here and one that we must carry into the world, we are charged with doing and with carrying in whatever space we inhabit and in whatever work we do. This has been a year replete with social challenges that remind us of our need to transform systems of oppression that are literally killing us. Our climate crisis, illustrated by the severe drought in California, is an example of a more gradual death, but only in comparison to the striking number of deaths by, of black and brown people killed by police brought to prominence in the last 12 months. When people hear that we are from the Divinity School, they expect us to approach these challenges in a different way. At the end of last semester, many of us marched together with other students across Harvard in a March on Harvard rally and demonstration in support of racial justice and police reform. This was following the non-indictments of the police officers involved in the killing of two unarmed African Americans, Michael Brown, the teenager from Ferguson, Missouri, and Eric Garner, the father from Staten Island, New York. It was a march that involved Harvard students from the college and from various graduate schools across campus. And as we marched, some of us from the Divinity School held up signs that said, hands up, hearts open. Hands up, hearts open. It was our version of the popular chant, hands up, don't shoot. We know that an open heart is a site for sustainable, personal, political, and social transformation. And we know that love keeps our hearts and minds open, ensuring that any form of justice we pursue will be restorative and transformative for all. The work of love is the work of transforming hearts and minds together. And it ensures that we do not lose sight of that truth that Shook Avery knew so well, that we are all connected. Nothing separates us. And it is a truth that I embody more fully 
now as a result of being here with all of you these last three years. This, my beloved friends, is what our divinity looks like. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. This morning in Tercentenary Theatre, 136 degrees were conferred on the graduating class of 2015 of the Divinity School, inclusive of degrees earned in November, March, and May. And they're comprised of 79 Masters of Theological Studies, 46 Masters of Divinity, two Masters of Theology, and nine Doctors of Theology. Today we have the opportunity in a more intimate setting, this splendid new setting, to celebrate these degrees and the individual attainments they represent. Each graduate will be presented by Associate Dean for Enrollment and Student Services, Maritza Hernandez. And as each person comes forward to receive her or his degree, if the graduate has indicated a desire for us to do so, a brief statement about his or her plans will be read by Tim Wils Wilski, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs. So we will now start awarding diplomas by degree, beginning with the MTS candidates. Candidates for the Master of Theological Studies. Alexander Abbasi. Alex would like to deeply thank his beloved mother, father, family, friends, and the Most High for always being there and supporting him along life's path. Rushan Abbasi. Rashan will be staying at Harvard, where he will be pursuing his PhD in Near Eastern Languages and Civilizations. Sumia Atahash. Sumia is very grateful for the amazing faculty and staff who have made this HDS journey just exceptional. Thank you for your patience and always being kind, warm, and helpful. Fatima Albanawi. Jonabi Barua. Jonabi is grateful for her intensely intellectual formative time here, lifelong friendships, and the opportunity to pursue her passion in Sanskrit literature at the University of Chicago after graduation. Mary Battery Vidabur. Mary would like to thank her family, especially her partner Ken, and her parents for their support and enthusiasm for this endeavor. James Beto. James would like to thank his mother, father, Maggie Kelly, Mimi, Granddad, Grams, Popeye, Bill, the Jeff Beddoes, Professor Lamberth, HDS faculty, and Colgate University's Department of Religion. Fidawi Isaac Verhain. Carly Berriant. Carly would like to thank her wonderful husband, Eric, and her parents for all their love and support. Sarah Belasevich. 
Sarah joins us from four months in Nepal. She'll soon return to help her relief team rebuild schools destroyed by the earthquake. Sarah is inexpressibly thankful for the selfless support of her parents. Adriel Borshansky. <laughs> Brian Cropper. Brian would like to thank his family, mentors, and friends for their support and guidance and patience. This fall, he'll be teaching at the Nueva High School in California. <laughs> Mitul Diane. <laughs> Mitul will be working on a social venture startup to help reduce infant and maternal mortality. She holds a tremendous debt of gratitude for the HDS community and lasting friendships. Benjamin Danner. Ben would like to thank his family and friends who have made this journey possible. Alexandra Davis. <laughs> Max Edwards. <laughs> Max thanks his parents for always allowing him to explore. <laughs> Hannah Elkin. Hannah will be starting a rabbinical school at Hebrew Union College this summer in Jerusalem. She would like to thank all 13 members of her family who are here today for their love and support. Rachel Foran. <laughs> Rachel is so grateful to her parents, her brother, and Keegan, as well as all the friends and mentors God has placed in her life while at HDS. She will be moving to New York City in June. Yusra Ghazi. Yisra wishes her parents, husband, brothers, and sisters could cross the stage in her place, because she would not be accepting this diploma without their support. Leland Gregali. Sarah Guzzi. Sarah is delighted to be joining the HDS admissions team as the assistant director of admissions. She would like to thank the usual suspects. They know who they are. Andrew Holliday. Andrew will be pursuing a PhD in South Asian languages at the University of Chicago. He would like to offer a word of thanks to his parents. Adeline Harrington. In the fall, Adeline will continue her studies at UT Austin, pursuing a PhD in religions of the ancient Mediterranean as well as studies in Greek, Coptic, and Syriac pepperology. Bobby Brook Herrera. Bobby Brook would like to thank his family and friends, notably his parents, who've reminded him to never lose sight of what really matters. In the fall, he will start a PhD at the Harvard Chan School of Public Health. Jennifer Hoppy. <laughs> Jennifer would like to thank her parents and her brothers for their continued support and encouragement. Li Yu Hua. <laughs> Zoe Jick. <laughs> Arjun Ju Jon. <laughs> Georgia Kashnig. Farba Kaukab. Farba focused on religion and politics at HDS and is interested in pursuing journalism. She's very thankful to her parents and family for their love and support. Kayla Kellerman. <laughs> Diane Kim. <laughs> Diane would like to thank God, her family, Eric, Michelle, and all those who supported her. She promises she will not do another graduate degree. <laughs> well, at least not anytime soon. Sanha Kim. <laughs> Gan Hee Lee. Benjamin Marcus. 
Ben thanks his family and friends, especially his parents, Seth and Renee, for their tremendous love and support. Kevin McIntosh. Kevin wants to thank his family, friends, and colleagues in student services for their continual support. Kevin is excited to continue working in student affairs after graduation. Caleb Meacham. <laughs> Molly Meaches. Molly thanks her advisor, Professor Beliso de Jesus, her friends, and her family for their support and care during her time at Harvard. Javier Mario Montesel Robledo. Javier will begin working next year as a PhD student and fellow in theological ethics at Boston College. He is grateful for his home at HDS and for the abundant grace realized in his parents. Pedro Noe Morales. Pedro is interested in climate change, faith-based organizing, and public policy. He has an offer from Notre Dame to pursue his PhD. Pedro thanks his mentors, Professors Carrasco and Cox. William Morningstar. Will served as the assistant editor of Harvard Divinity Bulletin and managing editor of the Graduate Journal of Harvard Divinity School during his time at HDS. Molly Moses. <laughs> Molly quotes Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for 100 miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Caleb Murray. Caleb thanks his parents, Tom and Melanie, and his dear spouse, Teresa, with gratitude to Stephanie Paulsell and Ann Monius. Cody Musselman. <laughs> Cody will pursue a doctorate in American Religious History at Yale University. She would like to thank her professors for their guidance and friends and family for the laughs and love. Margaret Myers. Alexandra Nikapur. <laughs> Megan Corinth Love Parker. <laughs> Megan is sincerely thankful for the unwavering support from her wonderful family members and friends as she pursues her dreams and aspirations. She would like each of them present today to know that she loves them dearly. Francisco Patiño. Francisco desea agradecer a sus mentores, hermanos y sobre todo a sus padres, Marta y Francisco, por ayudarle a conseguir esta meta. De todo corazón, muchas gracias. Matthew Percoco. Matt would like to thank his family, friends, and professors for their support. He'll begin a PhD program in Hebrew Bible at Harvard's Near Eastern Languages and Civilizations Department this fall. Sujit Kumar Prankumar. <laughs> Sujith is grateful for family, Professor Ann Browdy for nurturing, Shanghai Lee, Lee, Lee for believing, and Annie Russell, Tim Welsky, Maritza Hernandez, Jamie Johnson Riley, and Tracy Wall for their patience. <laughs> yes. Casey Rader. Erica Redder. Erica would like to thank her family for their support and the many members of the HDS community who have inspired and helped her along the way. Nicole Reinhardt Swerk. <laughs> Nicole will move back to her hometown of St. Louis, Louis, Missouri to work in social justice activism and engage in racial justice initiatives. Adalise Rodriguez. <laughs> Adelise expresses deep gratitude for all that is HDS. Her passion to help eradicate adverse health outcomes of agrobiotechnology propels her to MPH medical anthropology doctoral studies in the fall of 2016. Jesse Rothman. <laughs> Ali Sutar. Ali would like to thank his mother, Ghazala Sattar, and father, Abdul Sattar. It is because of their love and support that he is here today. Alexandra. 
<laughs> Alexandra Schiller. Alex will be moving from HDS to banking. Poop banking. Yes, you heard me right. Poop banking for fecal microbiota transplantation. Learn more at openbiome.org. She, she thanks everyone for their support. Sharad Shabad. Sharad is very much thankful to his wife, Sameya, his advisors, professors, Asani and Khan, that helped him to do his study successfully. He will move on to a, <laughs> he will move on to a PhD at Harvard Nelk next year. Dwight. Dwight Simon. Miranda Smith. Tamran Stevens. Tamara thanks her mother for providing everything that is good in her life and for serving as a living example of love. Karen Terry. Karen will intern at St. Vincent Hospital in Worcester this summer in their clinical pastoral education program. In the fall, she will begin a second unit of CPE at Brigham and Women's Hospital. She thanks her family, friends, and mentors for their support and encouragement. Ting Li Ling. In the fall, Li Ling will enter the PhD program of South Asian Studies at Harvard Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. She will engage in Indian philosophical and literary texts. Ashley Unruh. Ashley would like to thank her mother for being a beacon of love, encouragement, and support during her time at Harvard. Hatiz Utku. <laughs> Caroline Volstad. Caroline is deeply grateful for the people and experiences provided by HDS, and she looks forward to keeping them close to her heart as she embarks on her next chapter pursuing human rights law at Georgetown. Zoe Walls. <laughs> Jane Wolf. Jane knows that a commencement and a diploma is a family triumph. Thanks to all, but especially Scott, her husband of 35 years for making this dream come true. <laughs> Would the MTS graduates please rise? Dean Hampton, members of the faculty, family, and friends, I present to you the Master of Theological Studies graduates of 2015. Candidates for the Master of Divinity. Alberger. Chris would like to thank his family and religious community for inspiring him to go on to Divinity School, and classmates, faculty, and staff for making HDS such a great experience. Cynthia Anderson Bauer. <laughs> Cynthia cherishes the laughter, tears, and conversations that have shaped her three years in this community. In August, she will move on to Indianapolis or to Minneapolis to begin a residency in hospital chaplaincy. Sean Neil Barron. <laughs> Sean is excited to continue working next year at the Unitarian Universalist Association as he works toward ordination and future parish ministry. Melissa Bartholomew. <laughs> Melissa is grateful to God, her husband Edward, and their daughter Ella her family and friends, 
and to HDS. Next fall, she will begin a combined MSW PhD program in social work at Boston College. Darren Becker. Darren will participate in the process of America growing its own unique Buddhist lotuses in waterways like the Charles River. Desiree Bernard. Desiree is thankful for the many people whose love, generosity, and, and effort made it possible for her to have this journey at HDS, including family, given and chosen, friends, advisors, her beloved Tiffany, and her peers whose light in this world gives her hope for tomorrow. Aliyah Braley. Aliyah would like to thank her family, friends, and mentors. She has begun work at the Albert Einstein Institution that advances the worldwide study and use of nonviolent action in conflict situations. Elizabeth Bright. Elizabeth would like to thank her family for an inspiring foundation of support, trust, and love, her friends and classmates for their incredible wisdom, and her teachers for the challenge. Lydia Bremer. Erica Ontiveros Carlson. Erica would like to thank and acknowledge her parents, Virginia, Frank, and Dean, her abuelitos, and her family for all the sacrifices they made to make this dream possible. Nancy Ri Fan Shu. Nancy would like to thank her professors, mentors, parents, and dear friends for making her time at HDS a joy, and more than she could have asked for. Ryan Cogswell. Ryan wishes to give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and thanks his family. Mohamedou Jongye. What? While at HDS, Mohamedou got to hear his call to chaplaincy and learn to walk in his own truth, allowing him to reach a new level of inner peace. And now, it's a wrap. <laughs> Gail Docker. Docker. Gail's family has been deeply present throughout this journey, and she has been transformed by, an abiding, by abiding connections to her HDS community. She hopes that all of our futures unfold in love and justice. Stephen Dry. <laughs> Stephen is thankful to have spent the last three years with inspired and compassionate peers. He appreciates the steadfast mentorship of faculty and staff and the loving support of his family and friends. Edward Dunar. <laughs> this fall, Edward is beginning a doctoral program in systematic theology at Fordham University. He'd like to thank his wife, Kate, for her inspiration and support. Jennifer Edgar. Abby Engelstad. Abby is inspired by the stellar humans she's met at HDS. Today, she's especially grateful to her family, Cassie and Miles. Next year, Abby will be a chaplain resident at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. Jonathan Betts Fields. Jonathan says, may my work, my expression of love, and my life be for the glory of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Olivia Hamilton. Olivia would like to dedicate this degree to all of the educators who have nourished and challenged her, to her beautiful and bold mom, Lori, and in loving memory of her dad, Fred. Catherine Healy. This summer, Catherine will be ordained as a transitional deacon in the Episcopal Church and participate in the Lambda Literary Foundation's Summer Residency for Emerging Writers. She is grateful to her family, both original and chosen for supporting her through seminary and everything else. Emmanuel Hernandez. <laughs> Emmanuel le gusta Emmanuel le gustaría agradecer a sus familiares, especialmente a sus padres, por el apoyo mostrado y el ánimo impartido a lo largo de este camino. 
Dear Peggy, two down, one more to go. <laughs> Kaylee Hewins Clark. After graduation, Kaylee is looking forward to living in the Washington, D.C. area with her now husband, Seth. She would like to thank her family and all of her colleagues at HDS. Leslie Hubbard. <laughs> Leslie would like to thank her amazing blood family, spiritual family, Harvard family, and all her friends for all of their love and support. Leslie aspires to return this kindness moment by moment. David Hysong. <laughs> David would like to thank Dr. Charles Stang, Ms. Madeline Hung, Mr. Andam Vanderteig, Mr. Carson Fall, and Ms. Laura Martin, each for showing him what a friend can be. Sarah Jabor. Sarah would like to express her deepest gratitude to her parents who made this day possible. Their love, support, and encouragement are blessings that she could not be more great, thankful for. Leandra Lambert. Leandra wishes to thank the good Lord for wonderful friends and family whose love, encouragement, and support brought her here today, especially her brother Darnell and her mother, the first Leandra. Joshua Leach. <laughs> Ri Su Lee. <laughs> Ri Su would like to thank her mom and her friends for supporting her through her experience at HDS. Next year, she'll be teaching fifth grade at a charter school in Roslindale. Maggie Lowe. Grateful to all, Maggie wishes a special remembrance of her father. A professor at Bridgewater State University, Maggie has returned to start an institute for global religions and civic culture. Laura Catherine Martin. At Astra Perespara, to the stars, through bolts and bars, to her family and friends who made it all possible, Laura expresses her love and gratitude. Magda Mohammed. <laughs> Magda thanks her family, friends, and fiance who she plans to marry in the fall. She credits her successes alone to, to, to God alone, upon whom she sends praise. Anastasia Malin. Anna is excited to be celebrating today with family and friends. Thanks to you all for your steadfast love and friendship. She looks forward to continuing her work in food justice advocacy and community gardening. Johanna Margaret Murphy. With full heart, she will be diving into the unknown. Sean Mo Park. John Moe wants to thank members of the First Church in Cambridge where he served as a young adult pastor and wants to give special thanks to his wife, Jen, and his children, Isaac and Chloe. Bri Brianna Quick. <laughs> Brianna would like to thank Joel for his encouragement and love, her family for their support, and professors and classmates for being a source of inspiration. She intends to pay your kindness forward. Omar Rushan. <laughs> Omar expresses much love and gratitude for the family and friends who have shaped and supported him these past three years. He will be serving as ministry associate at St. Philip Presby Presbyterian in Houston. Melissa Feliz Rudd. <laughs> Melissa is grateful to her family, friends, teachers, and the HDS community for their love and support during the past three years, which have been a time of great learning and growth. Thank you. Isaac Santana. Isaac wants to express his gratitude and love for his friends and family, but especially for his wife, Erin, and his mother, Christine. And of course, the greatest blessings of all, being from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Skolton. <laughs> Barbara Skurr. Barb thanks her family for their lifelong support, her professors at HDS for their wisdom, and her colleagues and patients at Mass General Hospital for showing her what courage looks like. Jordan Sherrick. 
Jordan offers his endless and insufficient thanks to his family, here and not, and to his wife Amanda. Their love is, as it forever has been, his most certain support, his surest strength. Jennifer Stewart. <laughs> Jenny wishes to thank her husband, Guy, and children, James and Hannah, for traveling this road with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Taylor. <laughs> Lauren is grateful to not be traveling too far next year. She will enter Harvard's PhD in health policy, but looks forward to visiting HDS often to be regrounded and re-inspired. It has been a joy. Noah Van Neel. <laughs> Noah will be ordained in the Episcopal Church next week, and later in June will begin work as the assistant priest at the Episcopal Church in Hingham, Massachusetts. Noah thanks HDS for the formation and the information. Vanessa Sultan. Vanessa would like to thank her mom, dad, brothers, sister, friends, and Stephanie Paulsell. None of this, none of this would have been as wonderful without them. Would the MDF candidates please rise? <laughs> Dean Hampton, members of the faculty, friends, family, please join me in congratulating the class of 2015. Candidates for the Master of Theology. <laughs> Hans Decker. Hans would like to thank his wife, Melinda, for her tireless support, and to his sons, Emmanuel, and new twin brothers, Bram and Alastair, for putting up with this year apart. Peter Kahn. Dean Hampton, members of the faculty, family, and friends, I present to you the Master of Theology graduates of 2015. Please rise. <laughs> Candidates for the doctoral programs. Each candidate will be hooded by the academic Dean Janet Giazzo and their dissertation advisor. On behalf of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, candidate for the Doctor of Philosophy, Peter Vorkink. <laughs> advisor, Kimberly Patton. Dissertation entitled, Noti Se Auton, Why and How to Teach Religion and Philosophy to Secondary School Students. Peter thanks his doctoral committee of Michael D. Jackson, Stephanie Paulsell, Diane Moore, and especially his main advisor, Kimberly C. Patton. Peter will continue in the one job he has had his entire career, instructor in religion at Phillips Exeter Academy in Exeter, New Hampshire.
Candidates for the Doctor of Theology, Richard Bannon, Advisor Frank Clooney. <laughs> Dissertation entitled Apophatic Measures Toward a Theology of Irreducible Particularity. Dr. Bannon is a full-time dad in need of a job. <laughs> he has experience working with kids and horses and will work for food. Janina DeConnick, advisor Michael Jackson. <laughs> Dissertation entitled The Aftermath, Memorialization, Storytelling, and Walking at the 9-11 Tribute Center. Kate wants to express her gratitude to her teachers, friends, and family for their support these past five years. She can't wait to see what the future has in store. Anna Hoff Hines, advisors Mayra Rivera Rivera and Marco George, Mark Jordan. <laughs> Dissertation entitled Implicate and Transgress. Marcella Altus Reed, Writing and the Transformation of Theological Knowledge. Hannah is off to keep working to make the world a better place. In Turkey for now. Friends, colleagues, and students, students and teachers. It is your wisdom that continues to guide her path. She says thank you. Thomas Christopher Huckletubi, advisor Karen King. <laughs> Dissertation entitled The Rhetoric of Pietas. The Pastoral Epistles and Claims to Piety in the Roman Empire. Chris has been awarded a postdoctoral fellowship through the Louisville Institute, and this fall will teach at Andover Newton Theological Seminary. Chris would like to thank his family, and especially his wife Stephanie, and his daughter Claire for their unconditional love, support, and patience. He promised he would graduate in five years. Six wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> Nancy Hutton, advisor Kimberly Patton. <laughs> Dissertation entitled, I am going to do it. The complex question of action in theology and science in the life of America's first woman minister, Reverend Antoinette Brown Blackwell, 1825 to 1921. Thank you for the last 12 years at HDS. <laughs> Mark Lusto, advisor Michael Jackson. <laughs> Dissertation entitled, Devotions of Desire, Changing Gods, Changing People at a Transylvanian Pilgrimage Site. <laughs> Roberto Mata, Advisor Elizabeth Schulzer Florenza. <laughs> Dissertation entitled Empire and Ecclesia Mapping the Function of Ecclesia Rhetoric in the Book of Revelation. Roberto has been appointed Assistant Professor of Religious Studies at Santa Clara University and will start teaching in the fall of this academic year and became a proud papa for the second time last night. Welcome, Victoria. Luke Whalen, advisor John Levinson. <laughs> Dissertation entitled, Sanctifying a Dark Conceit, Seeing the Bible in the Fairy Queen. <laughs> we 
Would the doctoral graduates please rise? Dean Hempton, members of the faculty, family, and friends, I present to you the doctoral graduates of 2015. So thank you, Maritza, Annie, Tim, all the members of the offices of student services for your work and putting all this together. It's been a wonderful uh, ceremony. So I hope to meet and see many of you at our luncheon. We're moving right across to the other great tent uh, on the other side, on the Francis Avenue side. Um, so um, I wish everyone the very best of luck and look forward to hearing about accomplishments in the year ahead. So thank you, everyone. Um, I ask that our guests remain seated until all graduates have processed out of the tent. The platform uh, party and faculty will now lead the graduates from the tent, so from one tent to another, and that's HDS progress. <laughs> thank you very much.